In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft PowerPoint completely for free. PowerPoint is the standard in presentation software, and I'm going to show you how not only to view other people's PowerPoints for free, but also how to create your own, how to share them easily with others and collaborate on a presentation with others. I'll show you how to export PowerPoint into other formats, and again, how to do all of this completely for free. The way that we can do this is by using PowerPoint for Web. So let's jump right in and take a look at it. The way you access PowerPoint for Web is by going to office.com. When you get there, you're going to see some invitations to buy now. You're going to see this button that says Get Office. And if you click on those options, you're going to be encouraged to pay to use Microsoft PowerPoint and the other Microsoft 365 software tools. But many people don't know that you can just click here where it says sign up for the free version of Office to be able to access these tools completely for free. One of the main differences between paying for Office and just using the free version of Microsoft Office is with the free version, you're using it completely online in the cloud. You don't have to have an installed version of Office on your computer. Now, if you already have a Microsoft account, you don't even have to click this button to sign up for the free version of Office. You can just click sign in. So think about all of the different Microsoft products that you may have used over the years. If you've used Skype or Xbox or MSN or OneDrive, Outlook, if you have any of those types of accounts, you can just click the sign in button and then put in your email address that's associated with one of those Microsoft accounts that you have. Give me a minute to sign in and then I'll resume the video. Now that I'm signed in to my free office.com account, I see a list of my recent documents that are in my free account. And then also here at the left, I have a list of several Microsoft apps or software programs that I can use for free within this account. And I'll just go down here to PowerPoint and click. And it takes me to a screen where I can choose to begin a new PowerPoint presentation using a pre-existing theme, or I can start with a completely blank presentation and build it from scratch. That's what I'm going to do in this case. So I'll just double click on that to open up PowerPoint for the web, which for those of you that have used PowerPoint before, this should look very familiar. It's very similar in a lot of ways to what you have on a desktop version of Microsoft PowerPoint. If you are brand new to PowerPoint, you should definitely watch my beginner's guide to Microsoft PowerPoint. Once you've seen that, you'll also know the basics of how to use PowerPoint for web. But for the next few minutes, I'm also going to give you a quick intro to the basics of PowerPoint for web. So here we have in the center of the screen, the first slide that I'm working on. And this is in editing mode. In other words, it's not going to look exactly like this when I show the presentation or when someone else sees the presentation. This is just the editing mode. So I have a box here with dotted lines around the edges and it says click to add title. So I simply click there and type in the title for my presentation. Let's say my topic is the parts of speech. I just type that in. If I want to, I can click to add a subtitle. This is not necessary. A lot of times people put by and then write their name, or you can put a traditional subtitle. Now you may be noticing this panel at the right side. This is the designer, and this is a great feature in PowerPoint for the web. What PowerPoint is doing for me here is it's suggesting different design choices that I might consider instead of just a blank background. So I can just double click this one, for example, and it applies those design choices to my slide. Now you may notice that some of the designer suggestions have a diamond in the corner. That means they're reserved for paying customers that have paid for Microsoft 365. They have the premium access. But there still are some good suggestions there. If you don't see the designer panel, you can go to the design tab here and click on the designer button and it should open up. If you'd rather not use the designer, you can still go to the design tab and select a theme and apply that theme to your presentation. So I've chosen a design that I like and I'm going to go ahead and close the designer panel to show you some of the other features in PowerPoint for Web. Here at the left, you'll see thumbnail versions of the slides that you're creating. So this thumbnail represents the bigger slide here. When I'm ready, I can go to the Home tab and create a new slide by clicking this button, and that lets me choose from all of the different slide types. In this case, I want Picture with Caption, so I click on it, click Add Slide, and now I have a second slide. If you prefer, you can just right-click here in the blank space and choose New Slide. That's another way to get another copy of your most recent slide type. So now I can easily switch between slide one, slide two, slide three by using these thumbnails here at the left, and it changes the slide that I can edit here at the center of the screen. 
So here on slide two, I can click to add my first part of speech, and then I can click to define it or describe it. Now PowerPoint for web does have a similar layout to that of the regular PowerPoint. There are still tabs, and when you click on a tab, there is a ribbon that changes. This is the ribbon, and the ribbon is divided up into groups. But if you're really familiar with regular PowerPoint that's installed on a computer, you'll notice that the ribbon and the groups are much more limited and smaller, but that's okay. All of the basic features that you need to create a PowerPoint are included here in PowerPoint for Web. You even have some of the more complicated features like animations and transitions. Let's say I want to change the font type. I can click to go to the Home tab and you'll see that there are font options. I can easily change those up, change the font size, whatever I need to do to make this presentation look better and convey information the way I want it to. Over here, I can click to add a picture. I'll just double click on this symbol here. And that opens up this pop-up that I can use to navigate my computer and look for an image that I might want to upload into my presentation. So at this point, I would continue to add slides as needed, click on those slides, type in text, add pictures if I want to. If I want a different type of slide, I can click New Slide and choose a different slide layout or format. It's also pretty easy to click the Insert button here at the top and insert any number of other things. In addition to just double-clicking the image icon that was here, I can easily add other images by clicking here on Pictures, and I can upload from this device photos that are on my computer, images that are on my computer. I can look through the stock images that come with PowerPoint for Web. A lot of the images that appear are premium images that you would have to pay for, but if you uncheck this box, now you get only images that you'll be able to use. So I select one, click insert, and now I have an image of a boy. So I have a person and a place. In addition to pictures from the stock images, you can also do Bing picture searches. And so here you have access to a full search engine. If I search for boy at this point, I get lots and lots of results. And I'm limiting the results just to Creative Commons images. These are images that were created to be shared and used. In addition to inserting pictures, you can also insert tables, shapes of all kinds, icons, smart art. There's lots of cool options there. You can also insert extra text boxes if you want text to be floating somewhere over here or over the images, wherever you want the text to appear. Now think for a minute about some of the advantages of having this PowerPoint presentation in the cloud, online. One of the great benefits of this is that you can easily use hyperlinks. So for example, I could select this text, and then on the Insert tab, Insert Ribbon, I could click the hyperlink button and turn this text into a hyperlink. I just need to put in the address, click Insert, and now that's a hyperlink. Another advantage of creating and having your PowerPoint presentation online is that it makes it super easy to share it with others. I can click here on Share and put in the email addresses of people that I want to share this with. Notice though, whoever you add to this presentation, they will be able to edit the presentation. So this is how you could collaborate together with colleagues, fellow teachers, or people at your work or business. You could just put in their email addresses, say anyone with the text can edit, and they'll be able to collaborate on this document with you. You can send a message to them as well by typing here. If you don't want the recipients to be able to edit, that's okay. Just click and uncheck Allow Editing, click Apply, and then once you put in their email addresses and click Send, they will receive an email granting them access to view the presentation but not to edit it. Another way to share your presentation is to click Copy Link. That gives you a hyperlink that you can copy. You can then post that to the web. You could put it into an email newsletter that you're going to send out to parents or customers. There's just lots of ways you could use that link to get people to be able to see your presentation. Let's take a look at what it will look like for the viewer. When the viewer goes to your presentation, this is how they will experience it. They will see it as a viewer, not as an editor. The presentation begins in presenter mode, and then they can advance the slides by clicking or using the arrow keys on the keyboard or spacebar, just like in the regular Microsoft PowerPoint. I'm going to X out of that. Another thing you need to know about PowerPoint for Web is that yes, we are creating this in the cloud. It's online only. It's not on my computer. But if I go to File, I can choose Save As, and I have some great options here. One option is to save a copy online, so I would have two versions of this presentation. Also notice that it's possible to download a copy to my computer. If I do this, which I will, and click Download, 
This downloads an actual .pptx version of my PowerPoint. This is a real PowerPoint presentation document that when I click on it, it opens up my actual installed version of PowerPoint, and this now exists on my computer. So what that means is that even if you only have the free version of PowerPoint, PowerPoint for web, you're still able to create actual real PowerPoint presentation documents that you could send off to a professor, you could send them to students, you could send them to colleagues, coworkers, and they will really have no idea that you created this in PowerPoint for web. Other export options include downloading it as a PDF. If you do that, anyone in the world that you send it to will be able to open it up and see it for free. They won't need to have PowerPoint of any kind on their computer or an online account. So that's a great option to have. You can also download it as an open document presentation, and you can download the presentation as a series of images. So I really believe PowerPoint for Web is a powerful tool, and it provides for almost anyone world-class presentation software, and at no cost. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell so you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, you can do that by clicking the Thanks button underneath the video, or by supporting me on my Patreon account, or buying channel merch. And you'll find more information about those opportunities below the video.